Okay, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 8, Text Number 33. Prayers by Queen Kunti. Apare Vasudevasya. Apare Vasudevasya. Devakyam yachito byagat. Devakyam yachito byagat. Ajastvam asya she maya. Ajastvam asya she maya. Yadaya chasara dvisham. Sura dvisham. Apare Vasudevasya Devakyam Yachito Bhyagat Ajastvam Ashashe Maya Vadaya Chasara Dvisham Okay, translation. Apare others. Vasudev Vashya of Vasudev. Devakyam of Devaki. Yachita being prayed for. Abhyagat to birth. Aja unborn. Tvam, you are Ashya of him, Shemaya for the good, Vadaya for the purpose of killing, Cha and Suradvisham of those who are envious of the demigods. Translation Others say that since both Vasudeva and Devaki prayed for you, you have taken your birth as their son. Undoubtedly you are unborn, yet you take your birth for their welfare and to kill those who are envious of the demigods. Please repeat. Others say that since both Vasudeva and Devaki prayed for you, you have taken your birth as their son. Undoubtedly you are unborn. Yet you take your birth for their welfare and to kill those who are envious of the demigods. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. It is also said that Vasudev and Devaki, in their previous birth as Sutapa and Prishni, underwent a severe type of penance to get the Lord as their son. And as a result of such austerities, the Lord appeared as their son. It is already declared in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord appears for the welfare of all people of the world and to vanquish the Asuras or the materialistic atheists. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha 
ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಕ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘನತನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಖಾ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರ್ಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂಥ ರಾಧಕಾಂಥ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೋರಂಘೇ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಚಕೌಪಾತರುಭ್ಯಾಪಾಂಧುಭಾತಿತನಂಪವಾನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅನಫ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ವೀನ್ ಕುಂಟಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೈಟೋಲ್ಡ್ returning to our natural consciousness so at this particular time we're all very much affected by the pandemic the spreading of this covid-19 all over worrying everyone threatening the lives of everyone and our natural consciousness <laughs> well what what is our natural consciousness in while we're at this time we're conscious of this virus we should be conscious of krishna but instead our conscious we're we're conscious of this this uh, this this virus which is endangering everyone is that proper that we should ah uh? Oh you want our video you want my video okay yes, yes. Okay now You get it now I got your video You don't see me, yeah? Huh? Okay, they can see, they can see. You can see, yeah? Yeah. Are you seeing? Yeah. So, Raksha, yeah? Okay, carry on. Okay. okay, so I'm talking about consciousness. Because Queen Kunti, or rather th- this whole chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, is entitled returning to our natural consciousness so i was saying at this particular time we become very conscious of this virus means we're very conscious of our mortality everyone's in a state of worrying that oh i'm going to get this disease if i get this disease i can die it's life threatening well it's certainly something to worry about but at the same time at the same time we we're, we're not the controllers it's important for us to keep our krishna consciousness we don't want to just simply absorb our mind in thinking about viruses all day and night we want to think about krishna that's our natural consciousness but at the same time 
we have to protect the body because the body is important to us. We have the opportunity of the human body, we have association with devotees. It's very important, very meaningful to have association with devotees, to have the human body. It's rare. We're very fortunate. We want to take advantage. And if we get this kind of virus, then it's like threatening. We don't know. Many people are dying from it. Even some devotees have died. So, the point is, we want to be Krishna conscious, whether we're living or dying. That's very important. Of course, we're all dying, because we have this material body. It's going to die. Death is inevitable. The saying goes, for one who has taken, jatashyahi dhruvam ritu dhruvam janmam ritashyacha. For one who has taken birth, death is certain. Prabhupada would quote sometimes, so we would say, as sure as death, and death is certain. No, we die, but that death is of the body. What happened? What's that solution? Is it okay? <laughs> okay. So the, as sure as death, the body's going to die, but the soul Najayate Mriyate Vakadachin Nayam Budva Bhavitava Nabuya. Right? Where's your son Surashan? Has he learned this verse? Kasturi, where's Shama and Varsana? Have they learned this verse? No. Oh my goodness. You have to learn. These are key verses in the Bhagavad Gita. Najayate mriyate va kadachin nayam budva bhavitava nabuya. Translation? Who knows translation? Yeah? Kasturi is going to offer? Kasturi is going to tell us? For the soul, there's never birth nor death. Nor having once been, does he ever cease to be. He is unborn, eternal, ever-existing and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Right? Kasturi? Kasturi knows. Right. Good. Yeah. So the, the body dies, we change the body, the, the body. We have to give up the body one day. We don't know when, but we have to also see Krishna is in control. We have to depend on Krishna. Of course, we use our intelligence. We don't do foolish things like we, if we know somebody's got this disease, we don't want to go too close to them. Here in Mayapur, we're all observing social distancing, distancing. We're all keeping one or two meters away from each other. Even in the temple room, they only let a few people in the temple room. And when we go to Bhagavatam class, there's only a few people and we sit far apart from each other. <laughs> because association is not just by being close to them. Associ real association comes by hearing. And so we're associating here very effectively this afternoon. You can hear from me. 
you are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we are hearing the teachings of Queen Kunti. Queen Kunti is telling us about Lord Krishna's birth. Why did he take birth? Why did he appear? What was his purpose? We want to understand. It's like, why did we take birth? What did we want to do? We had some desires, right? Did we ever think about our purpose in life, why we took birth, what we wanted? When you were born, were you thinking, I just want to have children, I just want to work in the bank, or I just want to be a teacher, I want to you know, write papers, I want to be an engineer. You know, we didn't think about that. These things are really superfluous to us. They're, they're not really us. It's not really our natural position. Our natural position is to be the servant. Our natural position is to be the servant of Krishna. But we've forgotten Krishna. We take birth in this world and we become involved in so many things. We have our, we meet a man or a woman, we make a family, we have children, we have a home, and we want to stay there forever. And when a virus like this COVID-19 comes along, then we all panic, naturally, we panic. Nobody wants to die. Prabhupada said, that's natural because the nature of the soul is to live eternally. The soul is eternal, but the body is not eternal. We're identifying, we're trying to apply our spiritual nature to the body. We don't want to die, we want to live forever, and we do live forever as spiritual be beings. But the body has to die. The body is temporary. So Krishna comes as the child of Vasudeva and Devaki and he came and described, Prabhupada talks about how previously Vasudeva and Devaki were Prishni and Sutapa and they did great austerities to get the Lord as their child. We see couples sometimes they want a child very badly you know, when they don't get a child, they'll, do, they'll go to great lengths to try to have a child. And sometimes people, you know, they want a son. We read about, oh, we remember Maharaj Dasarath and Ramayana. He wanted so much to have a son, to be the heir to his throne, to become the king. So finally, with the help of great sages, you know, he didn't get one, he got four sons. But then he also got so many problems because he had three wives. So there were conflicts. Kaike wanted her son to be the king. She wanted to be the, the king's mother. And of course, uh, Goshyavya is the mother of Ram. And Ram is the oldest son, and it would be more natural for the eldest son to be the king. But Kaikeya was worried, and she plotted and schemed like that, influenced by Mantare, and then like this, the whole Ramayana comes about. Of course, that's well-known Leela. So these things happen. Material world is full of all this politics and intrigue. So many problems, difficulties come about. It's the nature of material life. And here, now, at this particular time, we have another aspect of material life. Disease. That there's always been disease. Sometimes disease is more prominent and more threatening than at other times. We know in uh, in Malaysia, we have a lot of disease also, tropical countries. 
you have things like dengue very common to get dengue I had it myself a couple of years ago in Bangkok people can die from it but, but it's more common people dying from this uh, COVID-19 so even some people there was recently a case one lady she said that I don't believe in God anymore because of this if there's really a God why would he allow such a thing as this virus to come about and to threaten take so many people's lives what kind of God would allow that so of course this is a very this this argument is raised by someone with less intelligence. We should understand the nature of the material world. The material world means birth, old age, disease and Janma Mritu Jaravyadi Dukadosh Anudashana. In Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna describes different items of knowledge and one of them is to understand the birth, old age, disease and death and to understand the different miseries. What is this? Connection lost? Sarvashan? Are you able to hear me? Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, understanding the miseries of the material world, uh, seeing birth, old age, disease and death, understanding how these problems are there in material life. And they come about in different ways, at different times. And they often come when we're not expecting them. Right? Prahlad Maharaj says, he describes in his prayers to Lord Nishringadev that the things that we, which we want to happen, they don't happen. And the things which we don't want to happen, they happen. And this is the nature of the material world. We meet with the unexpected. So what can we do about it? There's nothing we can do about it. What we should understand is the material world is not really our home. We're only here for some time. We're just visiting. How long we stay here, it's not really in our hands. How long we will be here, when we will go, where we will go. It's not really in our hands, but in some ways it is also in our hands. Because when we use this human life, when we use our life properly to cultivate Krishna consciousness, then it helps us for a better next life, that we can go on to cultivate Krishna consciousness in the future. That's very important for us. We want to get a good account a good just like in your bank you want to have some money in the bank behind you before you stop working in the same way in this material world we want to have a good account a good account of devotion if we have cultivated a good amount of devotion in this life then it will be very beneficial to our future life that we can go on to continue. We may even be fortunate enough to go back, to get out of this material world altogether and go back to Krishna. So for a devotees, it's not really a big problem. The devotee sees everywhere the same. 
A devotee doesn't see any difference between heaven and hell and liberation. Here we're serving Krishna, we give up the body, go somewhere other place, we continue to serve Krishna. Of course, while we're here in this body, we have to keep up, we have to maintain our connections, keep in good standing, cultivate nice relationships and show feelings and care for our family and relatives. It's very important, very important that we have nice peaceful homes. So many devotees are telling me that with this uh, lockdown and being at home more, it, it's more opportunity for them to be together and to associate together. But previously, you know, it's all rush, and rushing, rushing, early in the morning, go to work, come home late at night, tired, children, oh, it's so, so difficult to have time with them. But with this situation, now you're all blessed to have the opportunity to be with each other, to be at home, and it, it, it can be very nice to be together and have, you can do RT together, you can cook together, you can have kirtan together. All of these things are very important for the home, having a nice family atmosphere, right? The home is also the temple. It's not that you need to go to the temple. Family, grihastha people, their home is the temple. Of course, you can also, when it's convenient, you can go to the big temple, go to Jagannath Mandir. But at this particular time, your home is a temple. And you have to make your home, just like the temple. You should have some regulation there, particular times, you make the offering. And you should also spend time to do kirtan together chanting. Not only kirtan, some little japa, very nice. If the children are able to do it, it's very good to encourage them to do some japa. If the parents do it, then the children like to follow. If the parents are not chanting, then difficult to get the children to chant. So example is very important. So it's very nice that you can be at home with your family and give them some Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is a natural consciousness that's there within everyone eternally. In Chaitanya Charitamrita is stated, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunai. Shravanadi Shudachite Korehe Udai. Love of Krishna is in the heart of everyone, but it has to be awakened by hearing. So the children, they're also naturally Krishna conscious. We have to awaken their Krishna consciousness, giving them a good opportunity to hear and to chant as well as prasadam, not only prasadam, you know, give, give them prasadam. You, you give them prasadam, you never do kirtan, hardly ever speak to them, hardly ever read with them. So at this particular time, with the restrictions, it's an advantage for everyone to be together and to cultivate the good consciousness, help each other to become Krishna conscious. We want to take advantage of everything for the service of Krishna. Just like here in Mayapur, although the temple is closed, people cannot come, but the de many devotees are doing a lot of preaching. They're reaching out using the different 
mobile techniques and mobile phones and the computers and so on to contact people and to make programs and speaking arrangements. His Holiness Jayapataka Swami is speaking every day. He's speaking every evening usually. And we have devotees here. Uh, one devotee is translating to Russian and another to Chinese. And this way broadcasting to different countries in the world. So this way more people are getting an opportunity to hear about Krishna. Usually you have to spend so much time traveling. But at this time, I can just be in one place and I can think who I want to contact. And provided that, provided the Wi-Fi is working, <laughs> we say, Grihastas, you need a home. But the brahmacharis and the sannyasis, they just need Wi-Fi. And with Wi-Fi they can connect to the world and give Krishna consciousness to everyone. So this is our duty. You also, first you make your home Krishna conscious and then try to give that Krishna consciousness to other people. First become Krishna conscious ourselves. Our own consciousness is very important. And when we become situated in Krishna consciousness, then naturally we'll have some feeling and some concern to share Krishna consciousness with others, to distribute it. And there are many people at this particular time, there are many people who are becoming more introspective, they're becoming more, in, they're inquiring more about life, they want to understand more about it. I just got news, one lady in Bangkok has been distributing Bhagavad Gita's to her friends. So very nice at this particular time, although there's a lockdown, no people not working for you know, quite some time now, but she's managing to distribute Bhagavad Gita's because this is a time when people have time to sit and look at a book like Bhagavad Gita. And from the Bhagavad Gita, then their questions can be answered. Why this did, why is this happening? Why is it like this? Well, we are responsible. We get the results of our activities. Everyone on the planet is responsible. So this particular disease, it's pandemic, it's all over the globe. That means we're all responsible. There's a global karma. Just as uh, we have our individual karma and you have community karma, you have n a karma, a nation, a nation's karma, no, there's also a global karma. And that global karma has brought about this kind of pandemic situation where people's lives are being threatened, where people's health are being threatened, where the disease is spreading rampantly, quickly and deadly. So, what did we do to deserve this? We have, we have done a lot of bad things to the planet. Have we done anything good for the planet? There's so many bad things we've done. We've polluted all the rivers and seas. We've polluted the air. We've melted the snow peaks. The rivers are drying up. The soil is all being contaminated with so many chemicals and, fer and different uh, insecticides and so on to try to get more yield from the land. We've done so many things to ruin the world. And now we're getting reactions for it. And you can see how the world, just, the planet itself, just in a few days, just because people have stopped running around and people, everything's become quiet, 
how things are changing comes back to nature. You start to hear the birds sing more, the animals are more free, they can move around without so much problem, without being threatened by vehicles coming over, running over them. It's much more peaceful and relaxing. The whole environment is being, has been changed by these shutdowns. There's a good side to the shutdowns. It's not all bad. Certainly there's some good things about it. We have to appreciate. To everything there are two sides. And we say, the, someone said, my glass is half full. Someone said, my glass is half empty. It's the same thing. It's how we look at it. So everything depends on our attitude. So it's very important for us as devotees to have a positive attitude about this. We want to act in cooperation, of course, with the government, the different authorities, the political powers, and we act according to their recommendations. We listen to the advice of different medical officers and so on. And at the same time, we also listen to what the teachers, what the acharyas are telling us. That they're telling us that we have to awaken our original consciousness. Not only consciousness of the temporary nature of the body, but the consciousness of our eternal nature as a spiritual being and our eternal relationship with Lord Krishna. Okay, any questions? Anybody has a question? and you never have many questions. <laughs> You're so submissive. You just believe everything I tell you. You don't challenge. Yes, Sudarshan, what are you saying? Can you repeat the question, Sudarshan? Can we expect to see some better changes as a result of this disease? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Well, time will tell. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have a, crisp, a crystal ball to tell you the future. But, so, we would hope that the world may be a better place. Sometimes it often happens like that, that Krishna arranges these things. Just as 5,000 years ago, Queen Kunti is describing how Lord Krishna came to kill the demons. And of course, in the course of killing the demons, so many others, of so many even devotees of Lord Krishna also gave up the body in the battle of Kurukshetra. Just like Abhimanu, he also died in the battle of Kurukshetra. Now he was, a, he, he is of course, the son, he was the son of Arjun. So, in our battle against the disease, 
some bad people die, some good people may also leave the body. Already some devotees have given up the body due to this disease. Will some good things come about ultimately? We hope, we hope so. Certainly people will become more health conscious, they'll become more concerned about, more cautious about disease, actually knows how this disease came about. Some people blame China, other people blame America. Some people say, oh, it's because of this 5G, you know, before it was 4G, now it's 5G, and they say that's causing very big effects, big changes in the, in the uh, in atmosphere. There's so many more satellites up there in the sky, thousands of satellites up there in the sky, just to facilitate our using mobile phones and 5G. And all of these things don't help. They bring on a lot of changes and disturbances to the atmosphere and it could be because of that. And some people have related all of this. And even this 5G phenomena, this also was launched in Wuhan. And so Wuhan was where this disease originated, Wuhan city in China. So. Will some good come out of this disease? One good thing is we're seeing people are, <laughs> interesting, it's quite funny, that people are washing their hands more. Because there's so much warning to people that well, you have to wash your hands at least 20 seconds and with soap. So it's amazing that people had to be reminded to wash their hands. Of course for us as devotees, it's not a problem, as devotees, you know, we take bath two or three times a day. But not everybody is like that. So just reminding people to wash their hands, that's, some, that's one positive thing. People become more conscious of that. We hope there will be more, there will be a, a less people eating meat because one, one some people say the disease came about from killing animals, from uh, taking some animal flesh. So maybe less people will be eating meat in the future. We'll get more vegetarian. Okay, A any other points? Well, for people who are not devotees, it's a bit difficult for us to try to help them. Gen materialistic minded people, you know, we can't really do much to help them. Although we, we would like to chant the holy name in their ear. That's the best thing we can do for anyone hearing the holy name at the time of leaving the body is certainly beneficial. So particularly for devotees, we want to hear the holy name, the chanting of the holy name, very important. In Singapore, we have some devotees who do some hospice work and they meet people uh, with cancer who are, you know, they don't have very long left in the world. They're in the final, you know, last six months or so. So they, they, the devotees there, they have a regular program with them, and they spend time with them. They, 
they bring them some prasadam, bring them some nice, you know, something attractive to eat, and they, and then they also do some chanting, they do a little, some kirtan, and invite them to also join in a little bit, and then they also, you know, just try to make friends with them and encourage them to be happy. Uh, they play some games even, get them to play some games and in this way, you know, get them to relax, and just feel happier about life. It's uh, a science of dealing with people, helping people, leading people into the final stages of life. One actually has to be trained in this. And there are people who are, you know, generally, there are qualified people who are trained, help people to prepare them for leaving the body. So ideally, as devotees, for devotees, we would like to chant the holy name and hear about Krishna, to share the topics of Krishna. We would like to hear that we're not the body, If we tell them about reincarnation and they, they don't like it, they may be fearful about it. You know, where are they going to take the next birth can be very scary for people, knowing that they've been very sinful. So where will they take the next birth? They don't like to think about it. So we try, the best thing is to give them the holy name that the chanting of the Holy Name is the best way to help them to get some peace, to become a little calmer and less attached, to remove the attachment, decrease the attachment which we have for the material things. The chanting of the Holy Name is the best means of also taking away their, their sins, their past karma. It nullifies, can nullify all the reactions to their past sins. Pure, pure chanting of the Holy Name can destroy all of their past karma. So that's the highest thing, to give the Holy Name. What can we do to help the world or to help others when we're at home? Well, I was talking how you, you, you know, but the internet connections, you, you can reach people all over the world. People are on Facebook all over the world. You can put yourself into different, you know, you have different groups and so on, Facebook. You make a page in Facebook, something for yoga, something for meditation something about mantras, you can even have something about Krishna, and just see who comes in, see who contacts you, who is interested. But there's a lot of people looking for friends, looking for company, and you can make use of the technology to find them, to contact them. But chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, is also beneficial for the whole world. If you're sitting at home and you're chanting, then the, the, that's very helpful. That helps the world situation. All, not only your family, not only the living entities in your home, but everyone. The whole atmosphere of the world benefits. The more there are 
Krishna conscious devotees. Yeah. Yes? Yes? What do you want? You have a question? Well, we don't know. Some devotees have already left the body. Some devotees have already, you know, contacted the, the virus. One of my god brothers just recently is taken into hospital in London. You know, he's a very senior devotee. He's a very Krishna conscious devotee. His whole life has been dedicated to Krishna. But somehow he's got the virus and he's in hospital. So. We can't say that because we're devotees we won't get it. We don't know what is Krishna's plan. We have to, we have to surrender to Krishna. At the same time we try, we don't purposely go out of our way. Uh, we, don't be, we shouldn't be foolish and think, oh, Krishna will protect me, I can go anywhere, I can do whatever I want. No, you have to be very careful. But at the same time, it, it may happen. Some devotees, just because we're devotees, doesn't mean that we're immune to everything. We don't know what is Krishna's plan. And we don't know how long this will go on. There's no telling. Now we're saying two weeks, three weeks, like this, but we don't know. It may go on till the end of the year. It may, be, it may continue a long time. We don't know. We have to be prepared. I'm not understanding. You don't know how to put what to her. Well, Kr Krishna does say, "Kunti apriti janehi, nami bhakta pranashati." My devotee is not going to vanquish. So, we have some, you know, but, but that doesn't mean material, the material body won't die. Of course, material body is temporary. It's material body. But when Krishna says he will protect us, he means he, he will protect our Krishna consciousness. Whatever Krishna consciousness we have, that will never be lost. That, that will be protected. So he will keep us in the shelter, in the shade of his lotus feet. But we may have to give up the body. We're, it's inevitable we're going to give up the body. That's there for everyone. But we have to understand Krishna has his plans. We live by the grace of Krishna and we die by the grace of Krishna. We do our best to make the best use of this body, use it in his service. But don't do anything foolish. Don't think that because I'm a devotee, I'm immune from everything. <laughs> problems are going to come. Material world means problems. We're in the prison house. This world is the prison house, right? It's not a comfortable place. 
So the great souls who are yogis in devotion, they don't come back to this place because they know it to be a temporary place of misery. That's right, Dukalaya, Dukalaya, place, this is the nature, Krishna describes the nature of this world, Dukalaya, it's temporary place of misery. Don't try, we're trying to be comfortable, trying to be happy, live here forever, you can't do it. Make the best of the bad bargain, use it for Krishna, chant, be happy. At the same time, be detached, be attached to Krishna and detached from this material world. Okay, thank you very much. We will stop here now. Thank you, nice to see all these, dev all your nice devotees. After. Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. Okay, take care. We'll keep in touch. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.